Okay, so welcome back to this next video on pulmonary arterial hypertension. So, so to summarise where we are, we have seen that something in the endothelium has gone wrong. Uh, so the endothelial cells are now secreting too little nitric oxide. So all endothelial cells all the time are supposed to secrete nitric oxide and um, keep the smooth muscle cells that surround them um, in a relaxed state. However, in uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension, the endothelial cells that surround the pulmonary arteries are going to um, are going to get impaired production of nitric oxide. That means that the nitric oxide that the smooth muscle cells lining those uh, pulmonary arteries are um, going to receive too little nitric oxide. Nitric oxide activates the soluble guanylate cyclase. So if you send less nitric oxide, you're going to get less activation of the soluble guanylate cyclase enzymes. So you're going to get less production of cyclic GMP. Cyclic GMP then activates the protein kinase uh, G enzyme, and uh, protein kinase G, therefore, activity is going to go down. We want to understand uh, how protein kinase G going down is going to cause um, contraction of the smooth muscle. And in order to understand that, we need to understand how contraction of the smooth muscle is um, triggered. So, so far, we've seen that if calcium goes up, in the cytoplasm of a smooth muscle cell, it's going to produce calcium camodulin complexes. Calcium camodulin complexes are then going to bind to an enzyme known as myosin light chain kinase, which is over here. So this is myosin light chain kinase, or ML MLCK for short. Myosin light chain kinase. And a myosin light chain is just another name for a myosin head. So this is the myosin light chain kinase, MLCK. Okay, so these calcium camodulin complexes are going to bind to the myosin light chain kinase here. So here's the calcium camodulin complex. It's bound to this myosin light chain uh, kinase enzyme here. So I'll just draw it in there, right? And that's going to activate this myosin light chain kinase enzyme. The myosin light chain kinase will then phosphorylate uh, the myosin light chains, the myosin heads, and that will begin the process of uh, cross-bridge cycling, i.e. the myosin filaments will then begin to climb up these actin filaments and contract down these contractile units within the smooth muscle, and that will cause contraction of the smooth muscle cell. Okay, right, we are now in a position to understand how protein kinase G works. Protein kinase G uh, is firstly going to activate an enzyme known as myosin light chain phosphatase. Okay, so where should I draw this? I'll go on to the other side. So, uh, protein kinase G here is going to stick a phosphate group onto and activate another kinase enzyme, no, oh, sorry, another, a not a kinase enzyme, the exact opposite, a phosphatase enzyme known as myosin light chain, which remember is just another name for the myosin head, myosin light chain phosphatase. Okay, so when you have a phosphate group stuck on the myosin light chain phosphatase, it's going to become activated and that is going to now remove phosphate groups from the myosin heads and therefore um, stop those myosin heads undergoing the cross-bridge cycling. So you always have a balance in smooth muscle cells between the myosin light chain kinase, which is adding phosphate groups on, and the myosin light chain phosphatase, which is removing phosphate groups. And there will be an equilibrium where uh, a certain number of the myosin heads are going to have phosphate groups on them at any one time. However, if you increase the acti uh, activity of this myosin light chain phosphatase by phosphorylation, uh, which is undertaken by protein kinase G here, then uh, the myosin light chain phosphatase is going to become more active, so you're going to tip that equilibrium towards having less myosin heads with phosphate groups on. So that's going to lead to lower contraction. In addition, 
protein kinase G is going to inactivate the myosin light chain kinase, but indirectly. It's going to inactivate it by reducing the calcium signal within the cytoplasm of the smooth muscle cell. And the way it does this is by acting on uh, proteins in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So let's draw the sarcoplasmic reticulum here. Now, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, or SR for short, is an intracellular organelle that has calcium stored within it. And in order to activate uh, smooth muscle contraction, what you need to do is release calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This is done through IP3 receptors, okay, which form a pore in the um, sarcoplasmic reticulum uh, membrane, which allows calcium to leave. Protein kinase G is going to phosphorylate and inactivate these, pro uh, these IP3 receptors, so stopping them from releasing calcium. Okay, so you're going to get less calcium released. In addition, there is a um, pump on the membrane of the sarcoplasmic reticulum known as the circa pump which stands for the sarco slash endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. So this is the sarco slash endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. And this is basically going to pump calcium ions back into the lumen of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So it pumps two calcium ions back into the lumen of the sarcoplasmic reticulum for free protons moving out of the lumen of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. In addition, it's an ATPA, so you have to couple that movement of calcium into the lumen of the SR with the hydrolysis of ATP to adenosine diphosphate and also an inorganic phosphate molecule. Okay, so um, the Calcium signal is induced by IP3 receptors, allowing calcium to leave the sarcoplasmic reticulum and go into the cytoplasm. The calcium signal is reversed by the circa pumping it back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. We've already seen that the protein kinase G is going to inactivate the IP3 receptor and therefore reduce the induction of the calcium signal. It's now going to stick a phosphate group onto circa, which is going to make it more active. So it adds phosphate groups to inactivate IP3 receptors, but activate the circa pump. Okay, so here are these phosphate groups in pink. And we'll draw the IP3 receptor in blue here. So colour this in, blue. And we'll have the circa pump in orange over here. So, basically the circa pump is going to work more, it's going to pump calcium back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum lumen, so you're going to reduce the calcium in the cytoplasm in two ways, by reducing the release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and also increasing the movement of calcium back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so in both these ways you're going to reduce the calcium in the cytoplasm. If you reduce the calcium in the cytoplasm, you're going to reduce the calcium calmodulin complexes and thereby reduce the activation of the myosin light chain kinase enzyme. So, indirectly, uh, protein kinase G is going to inactivate the myosin light chain kinase uh, by reducing the calcium signal. So it activates the myosin light chain phosphatase, or the MLCP, so this is the MLCP, and inactivates the myosin light chain kinase, so you're going to overall reduce the number of myosin heads which are phosphorylated and therefore reduce the number that are capable of undertaking the cross bridge cycling and therefore uh, reduce um, the uh, contraction of the smooth muscle. However, we have not activated protein kinase G. We have reduced the activation of protein kinase G. So the exact reverse is going to happen. So when protein kinase G activity goes down because you're receiving less nitric oxide from the endothelium of uh, the uh, pulmonary arterial tree vessels, okay, uh, then... Um, uh, then what's going to happen is that these smooth muscle cells are now going to have 
less activation of myosin light chain phosphatase and indirectly more activation of myosin light chain kinase. So you're going to tip the balance in favour of phosphorylation of the myosin light chains or the myosin heads and that's going to increase the contraction of the smooth muscle cells and that contraction of the smooth muscle cells will then narrow the lumen of the blood vessels of the pulmonary arterial tree and that's going to lead to pulmonary arterial uh, hypertension. Now, what we want to see finally is how the drug Ryu Ciguat, spelt like so, Ryu, Ryu Ciguat, how this drug is going to help pulmonary arterial hypertension. And basically the way it's going to work is by activating uh, the soluble guanylate cyclases. So we go back to this stage here. Eos, uh, Rio, Ciguat, Rio Ciguat, let's draw it here, is going to come and bind to the soluble guanylate cyclase. So this is our Rio Ciguat enzyme, uh, drug rather, Rio Ciguat. So Rio Ciguat is going to come and bind to this soluble guanylate cyclase and it's going to do two things. It is going to directly stimulate the soluble guanylate cyclase enzyme, i.e. you do not need nitric oxide. It is nitric oxide independent. It will bind to this enzyme itself, whether nitric oxide is there or not, and activate it. So Rio Ciguat has nitric oxide independent activation of the soluble guanylate cyclase. So nitric oxide independent activation. Okay, so what will then happen is it will increase um, the uh, production of cyclic GMP and therefore increase the activation of protein kinase G uh, and therefore uh, lead to relaxation of the smooth muscle cell by activating the myosin light chain phosphatase and indirectly inactivating the myosin light chain kinase uh, and thereby leading to uh, less myosin heads having the phosphate group added onto them and therefore reduce contraction. Okay. In addition, what it does is um, it uh, actually sensitizes the enzyme to nitric oxide. So if nitric oxide is there, it's going to now have a bigger activatory effect on this uh, guanylate, cyc uh, guanylate cyclase enzyme. So uh, it's going to sensitize the enzyme as well to nitric oxide. So in both of these ways, it's going to increase the production of cyclic GMP um, in uh, your smooth muscle cells and produce uh, relaxation of those smooth muscle cells. When you relax the smooth muscle cells of the which surround the blood vessels of the pulmonary arterial tree, that will reverse the problem, and that's how Rio Ciguat uh, is hoped to be useful in uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension.